Welcome to Blog Talk Radio in High Fidelity. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Good evening. This is Andrew Aloha live out of Flagstaff, Arizona, with Spiritual Image Productions on Blog Talk Radio and Free Conference Call and YouTube. Establishing and maintaining right relationships with human beings. Aloha and welcome to tonight's Andrew Aloha Live. Tonight we're talking with Mari Simone, all the way out of California, in Coming Together Mind, or excuse me, Body, Mind, Heart, and Soul. Aloha, Mari, how are you? I'm great, thanks. Oh, Happy to be here. Thanks for being here. Uh, we look forward to your expertise on love. Are you an expert on love, Mari? I gotta know. Well, I'm passionate about it. Let's start there. <laughs> and there's a lot more than even I have to learn, but I do love love. <clears throat> good. That, that's a good thing. And we are. We're going to come back and talk to you, Mare, here. Just to let you know, Mare uh, Simone is a pioneer in the field of exploring Tantra and enlightened sexual loving. She's, in, uh, she's on a mission to, she's on a mission from God to heal and awaken men, women, and couples to the vast power of pleasure that is inherent in, in all of us, but dormant to most. Uh, she, is in, she has been on numerous television channels, including the Learning Channel, Discovery, HBO's uh, Real Sex, the Playboy Channel, British ITV, E! and more. She's also appeared on the popular Tantra video, Ancient Secrets for Modern Lovers. Simone leads webinars, se uh, seminars, and maintains an ongoing private practice along with an ongoing coaching via phone with clients across the globe. She lives in Southern California and tours the U.S. and abroad. She's a certified sex surrogate since 1986. She's a featured surrogate in the video Sexual Secrets, A Surrogate's Guide to Great Sex. In 1989, she founded Tantra Connections in Los Angeles to establish a community founded on Tantra's, Tantric skills and principles. During this five-year period, she had the great uh, fortune to study with many of the top Tantra masters in the United States. For more on Mari Simone, go to www.tantraheaven.com. And we are, <clears throat> we're going to talk to her. And right now, uh, if you guys can just bear with me, my sinuses are going crazy. They must be spraying chemtrails outside. And every time they do, the, my sinuses go crazy. So anyhow, we're going to give a, a big aloha <clears throat> to all, the, all, all of our underwriters that help make the show ma happen from week to week, month to month, year to year, beginning with the 90 Day Ascension Journey and, uh, at www.90dayascensionjourney.com. When you sign up for the 90 Day Ascension Journey, you will be facilitated with defining and redefining your soul through life purpose. You will be f assisted with finding out what ascension means to you on this journey. You will be provided with tools, techniques, and assistance to empower you to connect and reconnect with yourself, your emotions and feelings, and your mind, body, and spirit. Through a universal soul-centered process, you will, you will be going through a lifelong transformation that will allow you to move forward with your endeavors and never look back if you dare. And again, if you guys uh, are interested, uh, you can go to Kendall, uh, Kindle.com, and uh, you can actually purchase. I, I wrote the book for this almost two years ago to supplement this journey, this mentoring program. And so you can read the book, and then if you like, you can take the next step and do the journey as well, and just get a hold of me from there. So. Uh, and and uh, the book is available on Kindle for like 99 cents. I think I, I tried to make it for free, but I don't know somehow they they told me I couldn't do it, so I said, well, okay, fine. But anyhow, um, we also have a Novate at www.spiritualimageproductions.anovate a n o b i t e dot com, which is a French word, with over 25,000 scientific papers published on colostrum, a 90-day guarantee, and winner of the Healthy Living People's Choice Award twice over. And Novote focuses on helping people with weight loss, anti-aging, heart disease, diabetes, depression, high blood pressure, asthma, allergies, rheumatoid arthritis, inflammation, gout, lupus, fibromyalgia, Crohn's disease, cancer, ulcers, the polio virus, chronic infections, digestive disorders, Alzheimer's disease, uh, autoimmune disease, um, th uh, thymus gland, mental clarity, 
uh, maintenance and protection of the immune system, synthesis and repair of the RNA and DNA, and much, much more. If you go to my website, spiritualwomensproductions.com, and just go on the bottom right, scroll down there, there's a picture of a novate, or there's a gift there for it. You can just click on that, and that'll just take you to that, and maybe that'll make it easier for you to get there. So anyhow, um, we also have Maha Dikini Loray at www.mahadikini.com. Maha Dikini Loray's life has been a personal journey exploring sexuality and spirituality for over 20 years. She's a certified tantric counselor and tantric healer and a certified mind talent teacher. Maha Dikini Loray is also a graduate of Marvel Nons, year-long Sky Dance and Tantra Facility Training Program and a, member, and a current member of the American Association of Sex Educators, Counselors, and Therapists Club, as well as a charter member of the Association of Sexual Energy Professionals. She regularly attends train, trainings and conferences on current, to, keep up current, to keep current with the latest research and information on sexual education. Man, my sciences are going crazy. Anyhow, um, we also have the 2018 MUFON Symposium at www.mufonsymposium.com. MUFON is the oldest and largest civilian UFO investigative organization in the United States, with over 4,000 members worldwide in uh, 43 countries and, and, and all 50 states. MUFON has, all, has over 500 certified field investigators, including myself, uh, de deployed worldwide. This year's 2018 MUFON Symposium will be held at the Crown Plaza in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, from the 27th to the 29th of July with the theme being UFOs, extraterrestrials, and the future of humanity. There will be various speakers from all over the world, uh, all, all over the United States, pr but probably all over the world is my guest, uh, presenting at this event. Register now at the symposium website. See you there soon. And if you happen to be there uh, and, and notice me there, give me a big high, high five and let me know that, that um, you're there. So, and um, you see what else was it? Uh, and and, and uh, right now the, they just updated the website, so you can go there and um, and check out the speakers that they're going to be having. Uh, and in fact, I, I will be probably interviewing uh, three or four of them here within the next few weeks, next few months, uh, if you want to check them out as well. So, anyhow, we're back to Maury Simone, all the way out of California. How's the weather over there in, in California? It's really nice. We could use some rain, but other than that, we're doing just great. Oh, a little sunny. oh man. It was Not a, at this moment, but it, it has been perfect. <laughs> it was a beautiful, gorgeous day today here in paradise. <clears throat> and, but <clears throat> I still had to wear my jacket because it was freezing cold. Oh, my God. I can't believe that. So, <clears throat> anyhow, Marae, 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 right? Right. Uh, uh, um, so we're, we're talking about coming together, and I think the word was supposed to be spelled C-U-M, not C-O-M, together, um, body, mind, heart, and soul. Well, go ahead and fill us in on what the heck you're talking about. What do you mean? Well, I mean <clears throat> most people who come to me for coaching and support and having better love and better sex, find that that's the number one problem that they experience is that men <clears throat> come too fast in many, many cases. And they're kind of hardwired to have that natural occurrence, but it leaves a lot of women feeling unsatisfied and wishing <clears throat> that it would last longer. And in reality, Men can learn to last longer, but it is an art. It's a skill that needs some coaching and training, and practice does make perfect in this area. So it's a passion of mine. Because I was with a partner who really didn't know how to last long enough for me to feel satisfied. And when he and I divorced, that's one of the reasons that we separated. And for me, I felt this urgent need to really learn how and women can virtually come together more freely and, and, and in a more satisfying, deep, emotional, physical, spiritual way. Got it, got it. So I, I, I guess, you know, there, there's so much more to this than I think people understand and know. Um, so 
I guess maybe what what do you mean by satisfied versus dissatisfied? What does that mean for women for you? Yeah, great question. Well, I think <clears throat> women are multi orgasmic, and in many cases, we just begin to feel a world of possibilities and pleasure. And in that beginning, the arousal that starts for a woman sparks the man. And oftentimes, that spark is what causes him to reach that climax long before the woman is really ready for him to, to let go. Because really and truly, once a man has come, actually speaking, um, he goes. He usually goes to sleep. Or in his energy and his interest wanes substantially. And so it's really important, I think, to help men and women come together so that they can stay together. So, Mar Mar Ray, in my experience in, uh, with, with, even, uh, with other lovers um, and also with doing research and so forth, typically when people um, come or, you know, orgasm and then they go to sleep, generally it means that they're, 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 they're feeding off each other's energies instead of supporting each other's energies and then that's that's why they go to sleep because they, they you know they're they're they they spend their energy uh, trying to either dominate or or something um, in, in while they're while while the 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 process is happening and then when they orgasm then all of a sudden they release and then they're they're worn out and and um, they then they go to sleep so now versus the other the other side of the coin. Um, where, where you know, you, you, you can do a meditation or something that's very inspiring or energetic, and then when you, uh, you, um, you, you become intimate with your partner, then uh, have, you ever, have you ever had an orgasm, and then you sit there and talk for like another hour or two afterwards about different things? Have you, have you done that before? Mm, yeah, definitely. Orgasm. It opens that deep level of communication, and I call it pillow talk, the experience of intimate conversations that occur before, during, and after sex. Exactly. It's been a very satisfying experience. Which means it's, it's more of a spiritual experience than just a mundane, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, mundane, um, uh, layman's experience, if you want to call it that. That's that's what I understand. Well, I would say, I would say that they support each other. That <clears throat> a physical experience without the emotional or spiritual component can be pretty mundane. But when a woman and a man find an emotional connection with one another, it escalates the experience of pleasure and allows it to really actually feed off of each other in a way that gives each other energy. And there's, there's a difference with what you mentioned just a few moments earlier about men feeding off of a woman in a way that causes him to come quickly. I think when a man can learn to not just feed and feel the excitement of a woman, but find that perfect balance between being excited and relaxed. Then there's a magical state in between those two components that can allow them to really feed off each other in a way that nourishes each other, and that really nourishes a woman, so that she is able to reach not just one, not just two, but three or more orgasms in all of the three peaks of pleasure that are possible for her. Um, and I'm speaking about the clitoris, the, the G spot, and this very deep OMG spot. And in a lot of cases, women only experience a clitoral orgasm. They really don't even know that there's the possibility of pleasure internally. Um, or they know about it because they read about it or they hear their friends talking about it. Or once in a while, they maybe have a taste of it. It just happens every once in a while. <clears throat> and it's usually when a woman is really deeply relaxed that she's able to access that phase of Oh, and gee, oh my God, that pleasure feels so good. And they never want it to end. So it's really 
behooves a partner to want to last as long as his partner wants him to, so that they can just keep riding in that state of multiples that really do nourish each other and leave them feeling better than when they started, literally. More energy, more connection, more aliveness, <coughs> more vitality, and, and even more creativity. Got it, got it. And, and again, well, I, I got to say this because sometimes people come on and listen to these shows and they're, they, they're, they're, they're either virgins or practically virgins. And so I got to ask, what, what, what do you mean by multiple orgasm? What is that? What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> I'll speak from a woman's point of view first because I am able to speak some experience here. <laughs> All right. I would hope so, yeah. And, <clears throat> and, I, and I work a lot with women who, in some cases, have never experienced an orgasm or who have only had literal orgasms. And, and usually those are in, inspired or brought on by a vibrator, and the vibrator kind of an orgasm <clears throat> can be like a very short, quick experience. Um, and sometimes it's satisfying, other times it's sort of a fleeting feeling of there it is, now it's gone, that quick, mm. which is really not very fulfilling. And oftentimes, because a vibrator has such an intense frequency, um, if that's all that a woman relies on for stimulation, it can be a quick burnout and it can leave her feeling unfulfilled, um, even if she's had some kind of an orgasm is usually a very low quality orgasm that only lasts a few seconds. Multiple orgasms, on the other hand, can be one <coughs> orgasm that leads to another, starting maybe with the clitoris or with the nipples or with you know, the back of the ears and the toes. I mean, there are so many parts of a person's body that can experience maximum pleasure and it takes time to explore them. I, I love giving and receiving massage and for me when I give a massage to someone my greatest pleasure is to feel them increase and expand their pleasure and to be able to experience what they're feeling by them really tapping into it and expressing it and allowing it to sort of immerse um, the, their entire being in that experience of pleasure. And for me, when I receive a massage, a really good massage, I discover that every part of my body is orgasmic. And literally every toe and every joint and the back of the ears and the back of everything, between and behind and everything, all these places can be highly erogenous zones. But they need time to really be nurtured and come to a level of Mm, expanded state of fulfillment. And the beauty of that is, I, I talk about different erogenous zones. So we have the primary erogenous zones that we're all familiar with. That would be the genitals, the nipples, the lips. And then we have secondary erogenous zones, um, which, by the way, when the secondaries are stimulated before the primary, so in other words, instead of just going directly to the genitals, you start with the feet in between the toes and the arches of one and around the ankles and up the inner calf and between, you know, the, uh, the back of the knee and, and up the inner thigh and that will decrease just before you reach the nipples. Just those areas alone can create an immense buildup of pleasure that by the time you finally do reach the genitals and before you even touch the clitoris, Start with the outer labia and the inner labia, and all these build-up points bring about an immense desire, and that's a big um, turn on for both men and women. That expectation of uh, feeling pleasure, and yearning for it to be more focused, and when the yearning overrides the contact, it really connects the mind and the body in a beautiful way. For Particularly, we tend to be multitasking and thinking about many sometimes distracted. That yearning feel, that focus. By the time <coughs> the clitoris is finally touched, 
the lightest touch can create the most emotional pleasures. Got it. Um, and, and, right, and so it, it, and the, and the opposite uh, approach where a person just goes directly to the clitoris, it often kind of, kind of short circuits the desire and the pleasure and maybe it feels good for a little while, but after a while we, there's not enough of a build up because for a woman as much as it is for a man, we need to be engorged. We need to have a lot of oxygen and, and blood flow in that area. Massage, especially when it's directed in the, with the intention of building pleasure and desire in the primary erogenous zone, it helps to increase the blood flow so that just the lightest touch can create extraordinary sensation that wouldn't be the same if it was just immediately starting there and, and beginning. Just kind of rubbing the clitoris and trying to get it excited. So yeah. when I, when I talk about multiple orgasms, I'm thinking about all these erogenous zones. And then when you get to the primary uh, genital erogenous zones, even here we have the clitoris, and then internally there's just in the very beginning of the open of vagina, there's a lovely bundle of nerves and going a little bit in, like a couple of inches, we find the deep spot. Or in Tantra, we like to refer to the psychic component of that key spot as the sacred spot because it really holds tremendous power and psychic abilities and um, the capacity to really access um, the mystical state of pleasure that are also very spiritual. And until the clitoris is aroused, oftentimes the deep spot is not even receptive or sensitive, it can be numb. Or worse yet, it can be tender and not feel good at all. Um, or a combination of the two, there's numbness, there's tenderness, and kind of pain. Um, if it's not relaxed, it's open. And then there's that very, very deep place inside of a woman that when that place is touched and everything else is kind of built up towards touching that spot, that OMG spot, anatomically it's referred to as the anterior forum spot, where it's like right at the top of the cervix, if a woman still has a uterus, but even if she doesn't, there's a deep, deep spot at the very back end of the vaginal canal that can be tremendously pleasurable. And it's just like, you know, it really is a lot of spot. It's like when you touch that place and everything is prepared for it, <coughs> over there, it never seems to end. It just keeps coming and coming and coming and coming. And that's so powerful. And the beauty about that is that it doesn't require a lot of thrusting, a lot of movement. It's just like when that place is open and yielding and responsive, the slightest little movement can cause the most immense amount of physical sensation for both the men and for the woman. And here's where men can really feed off of the woman. The Ben the partners where as I'm feeling this enormous pleasurable sensation, I ask them, do you feel what I'm feeling? And they do. Yeah. And that amplifies my feeling because then I know that it's not just me having this experience alone, but that my person <coughs> is feeding his pleasure. But it's in a way where it doesn't require a lot of movement and therefore it doesn't take a man to that point of no return. You know, he can move very slight micro movement, high chi movement, and still experience waves and waves of pleasure. Got it, got it. So, yeah, so that's that's what it's like to be multi orgasmic coming in and dancing. So, um, man, oh, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so I was like, for a man, it's learning how to separate the climax from the ejaculation <clears throat> so that a man can have rolls, um, waves of multiple pleasurable experiences where if she's relaxed enough, she can stay on that range of pleasure without coming to a climax, ejaculating, and then having to be over. Now, most men don't realize this is possible because until you experience it, it, it just sounds like words. And my experience of having worked with men for over 30 years in this field and, and learning how to help men have experience is really what keeps me riveted in this 
journey because I know that when a man can learn to become multi orgasmic and not climax and, and come and go, or as I call it, have an orgasm <coughs> or after the time he's off and sleeping or ready to go to sleep, and then a man and a woman can together have this experience of just keep building and leaving them in a state that hard to put into words, but it's almost like a zone. It's like this orgasmic zone. It just feels like it, it's timeless. It's rejuvenating. And this is what the Taoists talk about um, when they refer to the Tao of sexuality, the Tao of sexology, is being able to ride these waves of pleasure and multiple waves of pleasure and in the end feel younger and, and even look younger. You look in the mirror after having an experience like that and it just wipes all the stress away from your life. And you can see it in your face. You can see it in your, the glow of your skin. And actually, that glow can last the day. Oh, are you right? You know, every bit is wonderful and how you feel <coughs> with yourself. It's actually more so. It's like how you feel after having an amazing look at it, or multiple, <laughs> as I, you know, I'm describing here, is really the true tell of how deep and valuable and helpful the experience was. The orgasm itself can be awesome, but how you feel afterwards is really telling as to how deep you and your partner, or even if you're alone, how deeply you tapped into that zone where pleasure is just like a wave that washes through your whole body. So is that what you mean by, by being satisfied? You feel uh, an emotional, <laughs> uh, emotional uh, level of, of of relaxation, and your mind, even your mind, is clear, and even your spirit is just humming through your body, and and, and your your physical body feels an, a level of glowingness. Is that what we're talking about? Mm -hmm. Definitely a level of glowing. There's a, an afterglow that can last for a long, long time. And in that afterglow, <clears> it also helps one tap into a deep state of um, intelligence. I think it helps us access our inner genius, that part of us that has access to creativity <coughs> and brilliant <coughs> ideas, the kind of ideas that make each of us unique and special in our own way, that helps us feel deep into the source of our own creative powers. So right. for me, I, I love writing. I love processing thoughts and ideas and developing them in words. And so for me, when I'm about to write something important, I will start with getting turned on and feeling my arousal and activating that energy. And then I'm speaking from a place of real aliveness. And that aliveness comes through onto the material that I'm writing. And it really, I, I believe, helps people really be able to relate to it because it's coming from a place of rich, juicy, total turn on feeling. Got it, got it. Um, now, well, first of all, I want to give a big shout out to uh, Aloha Jay. Thank you for, thank you for stopping by. And... I, I got somebody here on the line. I'm, I think they want to ask a question. Uh, they have their hand raised. So let me uh, bring them in and see what it is that they want to talk about. Uh, Aloha, error code 780, you're on the air. I'm not sure if you... Hey, Andrew, it's Jay calling from Canada. How's it going? Jay, hey, what's going on? How are you? Good. Thanks for <clears> my call. And thanks for that uh, gift that you sent me, that the CD that you sent me a while. Yeah, you, you got that. Good. I was wondering wondering about that. Yeah. So, um, do you have a question for, for Mare tonight? Yeah, I just wondered here. Um, this is a very interesting, fascinating conversation, uh, Mare. Um, my question uh, regarding um, Tantra is that. Um, I'm actually studying classical tantra right now, and I just wandered um, between the classical tantra and the neo tantra that I've been here teaching. I just wonder why, uh, when it comes over to North America or somewhere, or that it comes over to Western um, civilization, if you want to call it that, um, is that um, it, gets, it gets sexualized in a sort of way. Um, 
where, where they come from, right? Hmm. That's a very deep and interesting conversation. And first of all, I will say that in many cases, classical culture that comes from India <coughs> has been shrouded with a certain degree of mystique and mystery around sexuality. And that, unfortunately, even though the Kama Sutra is a part of the Indian uh, folklore and, and system, that most people in India don't really know their full sexual capacity. And there's a lot of shame and taboo around sex, even though Tantra comes from India. Classical Tantra is very different from what you'll find being practiced or spoken of in modern day India. So, first of all, I think that there's a sexual dance that takes place in the cosmos. And if you want to speak from the classical Indian standpoint, it's considered the dance of the duality of masculine and feminine energy. And it isn't just about man and woman, it's about the masculine and feminine that's within each and every person, and that's within each and every aspect of, of life in, in the elements and in all of creation. And it's that unity, that dance that causes and creates life. And it also is part of the sexual dance. Um, which in fact creates life as well. So for me, I think that we've been living in a shadow of sexual shame and uh, discouragement for many centuries. And I guess I'm excited because I, you know, I come from a background in the Middle Eastern country. So I'm born in America. I know that Middle Eastern um, heritage, which is in my blood, has also had a lot of taboo and shame and a lot of um, demeaning ways of approaching women's sexuality, hiding, you know, protecting men from being seduced and allured by women. Um, so for me personally, I just look at the sexual revolution that began for me in my 20s and all the way through my existence and seeing an awakening that isn't just about sexuality, but it's about personal power and feeling that my place as a woman and how powerful <coughs> that position is. And I know that when I'm in my sexual power and feeling my high quality spiritual sexual energy, that I'm truly able to access magic and the way that I can attract and manifest and create and rejuvenate and, and that we were designed to have that experience. And I think that the reason why there's a lot of shame ran around it is because it makes it too powerful to be controlled and manipulated and kept small. So I don't know if that answers your question. I think I went off on a little bit of a tangent there, but I can only speak truly from my own experience. I think <coughs> the more men and women learn to come together, the more we learn to tap into the great secrets and mysteries within one another that nourish and feed us. And so this might not be so much classical tantra as much as it is neo tantra. The neo tantra means tantra for the modern day. And although I have great respect to classical tantra and uh, the practices of mudras, yantras, mantras, some of that really isn't so applicable in modern day in my life, as much as it is me and my culture in my expression of my family. Does that make sense to you, Jay? Oh yeah, it does. And yeah, yeah, I find that it's uh, I find it's more of another because we do like, if you want to call that, some feminine, feminine energy. But I feel it's just a it's a dance between a form of and a form of energy. Well, it's, yeah. it's it's more of a dance, like it's yes. Yeah, it's like we, you know, we we always say it's old male energy or female energy, and I feel that um, it's just a, it doesn't have that um, label on it. I feel just the dance of 
formless and form. Mm -hmm. When I say masculine and feminine energy, I'm thinking about the the opposite, the polarity, even even that formless and form. <coughs> Formless is being the feminine energy that expansion that feels void. And the masculine being sort of the banks of the river, if you will, that holds the feminine energy in such a way that gives her that change of form. So we need as masculine and feminine in every person. Some more than others. It depends on the sexual orientations and natural preferences. Um, but it's, it's about that balance between the right and the left side of our brain and our body. Having it be harmonious and cohesive. And then it's been mutually uplifting and nourishing and, and empowering and feeding <coughs> one another. So, um, so I. Let me ask you this. Go ahead. Hmm? Go ahead. Well, I can ask you how. Have you experienced a kind of orgasm where you feel energized as a result of the experience? And, and rather than feeling like you've come and done, that it feeds you, that it gives you a life force, that keeps you uh, inspired and excited and rejuvenated? Well, it's a kind of personal question you have to go on air. Um, yeah, I know. I but find that uh, I know, but there's, there's people listening on the show. But uh, <laughs> that's the whole idea, Jay. Yeah, Duh. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> right. The yet. thing is that. Sorry, you know, so. well, the thing is that I think for for, um, for myself, I think it's just it's more uh, uh, what do you call it? the experience of. Um, Feeling, I don't know. I get you, you get tired after you, you know you do it right. So I think that um, the you know, partner and I is that um, I think it's more of uh, like the like the depth of energy. So I have more. I think I'm more aware of it now than, than before when it, you know when we're young, right? We're so excited about we just don't think about a lot of things. I know there's so much happening and then there's all over the place, right? So yeah. You know, yeah, and we're just kind of following that instinctive drive. I think as we get older, one of the beauties of wisdom and maturity is that we start to really step outside of our own needs and desires to reach out toward the other and find fulfillment in giving satisfaction to the other, which then helps us understand the opposite side of that polarity. If it's, you know, a man learning how to really serve a woman and her desire I think you can learn a great deal from her, and not just about bedroom experiences, but also how to be more relaxed in life, how to be more centered in a way that you know, excitement can be a driving force, but by calming <coughs> that force enough so that it isn't overwhelming, that same practice can be applied in business and in creative endeavors. So that you can feel the excitement of an idea, um, that spark of you know, interest and curiosity that awakens the inner creative fires, and then learning how to harness that energy makes it real, makes it tangible, makes it something that becomes a manifestation of whatever that creative endeavor is about. Well, you're absolutely right, and I think I feel that you know meditation is a real big part of it, like a real big part of it. I think. Mm -hmm. I know is that what happens with with yourself, as in terms mm -hmm. of when you um, practice, and also the the, the the when you tell your clients too that they got to relax your body too, right? And I think the only way to do it is really to tell the mind you get this sort of practice to to do that. Do you do you, mm -hmm. Is meditation a big part of that too? About the experience yeah. too? Because you have to get, you can't yeah. be, if your energy's going all over the place, you're not really aware of what's going on. But if you're actually mm -hmm. there in that present moment through a practice of meditation that, you know, uh, before um, you have that experience, I think the, 
that you're, you're more aware of what's going on. You can, you can feel where the energy is actually going, how it's actually, how the exchange between you, you and the other person. Right. Am I correct? And you can even or direct it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And you can even learn to direct it so that if somebody is having some uh, organ failure of some kind or feeling some quality of illness or just being out of balance, you can learn to channel and direct sexual energy in a way that can help bring that person's body back into balance. In fact, in Taoism, there's a certain kind of practice where different traditions are beneficial for different ailments in the body. And a Taoist doctor would recommend certain sexual positions to help bring the body back into balance. To go back to another experience, my own personal experience is that I learned how to become multi-orgasmic through my practices in meditation. And when I say that, it's sort of like um, it was like being in a spiritual zone where I would practice meditation with, you know, without physical contact. It was just using my breath and my, putting my focus and my awareness on my body and moving the energy up and down my spine. But I started feeling orgasmic energy moving down my body and into my genitals and beyond, which then taught me how to become multi-orgasmic in other arenas, whether it was through, to me, you know, the word orgasm is more than just a sexual experience. In fact, if you look at the etymology of the word orgasm, it's a riceness and an engorgement that can occur in any part of the body and in any organ in the body. So the Taoists teach how to use orgasmic energy to um, strengthen every organ in the entire body by channeling that energy, wrapping it around each organ in the body. Mm. So, um, <clears throat> um, Jay and uh, Mare, what I want to do right now <clears throat> is take a breather, uh, take a time out, um, I want to play some music by Dr. Steven Schwartz from his album, um, <laughs> Cellular, Cellular Alignment, I believe it's called. So anyhow, the, uh, the, the, he put together uh, an album where the, uh, he calls the songs, uh, he names the songs by zone. And this particular zone we're talking about is number four, emotional, Emotionally Disconnected versus uh, Emotionally in, in Integrated. <clears throat> and um, they're they're designed to help to help the body uh, basically shift to a much healthier state of existence. And so anyhow, I want to send out love, blessings, healings, angels of light and love <clears throat> to you, Mare and Jay, and your family and friends and your vehicles and places of residence as well as mine. Uh, and um, that <clears throat> and um, also to the president of the United States and to all those people participating in the Olympics and um, also to all the animals and minerals and the plants on the planet, especially the ones we need, need to concern. Anybody you guys want to add to that? <clears throat> yes, everybody. <laughs> everybody. Jay? We all be united. Got it. Jay? I'm sorry, but... Uh, and in... What, what, I'm sorry, what, I'm just lost my mind here. So, what was the question regarding? Uh, we're we're, we're going to play some music, <clears throat> and we're going to send some light, love and light out to to people. Anybody you want to add to that? <clears throat> okay. Sure. I'll say it out loud, or uh, yeah, of course. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I, I would say. I would actually say it uh, uh, for myself for the uh, communication. Uh, to the DDAs actually uh, I deal with uh, or talk to or try to communicate with. So Jay, we're going to play some music right now. And uh, is there anybody you want to send out love and light to right now? Uh, I would say to the people who are actually um, um, have some suffering that's going on and uh, uh, in this time of change, uh, the emotional stuff that goes on, people who are, who are in, that, in that predicament. So. Okay. Thanks. And thank you. To everyone else in need of concern, we will be back. Uh, zone 4, emotionally disconnected versus emotionally 
integrated by Doc, uh, Dr. Steven Schwartz from his album, Cellular Alignment, and uh, we will be back. <clears throat> I think it's supposed to be on. Thank <laughs> you. 
And we're back. This is Andrew Aloha Live out of Flagstaff, Arizona, for Spiritual Women's Productions on Block Talk Radio and Free Conference Call and YouTube, establishing and maintaining right relationships with the human body. Tonight we're talking with, um, with, um, and, and by the way, that the album that we were playing with is Cellular, cellular Attunement, uh, and, and that we were talking about, not Cellular Alignment. Sorry, I apologize about that. But anyhow, uh, Dr. Stephen Schwartz. Uh, and I apologize that I don't know for whatever reason the sound seems to be really low, but um, you know regardless if that the the music is doing what it's supposed to be doing, then you should you should feel a, a sense of peace, maybe a, a, a sense of uh, calmness uh, from just, just playing that. And even though you don't hear it out loud, yeah, your your body feels it, and so it's like that. Um, so anyhow, we're we're tonight we're talking with. Uh, Mare Simone, all the way out of out of uh, California. Um, who uh, and tonight we're talking to her about um, about her her um, about it coming coming together, um, body, mind, uh, spirit, and and I don't know. Did, did you say so? Do we say so, Matt? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. We're in the right direction. And I want to thank Jay for coming on and um, and sharing with us. I appreciate that as well. Um, and so, so now I want to move on, move forward. And we we've been talking about uh, orgasms, different types of orgasms, and um, we've been talking about uh, males. Uh, well, you know, being 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 in a state of of awareness that allows you to um, experience an, or, an, an orgasm. In a good, healthy way, versus falling right, you know, falling asleep right after you're done. So, um, and there are different steps for that process. So, um, now one of the things that we talked about earlier was of being satisfied. Again, I, I'm, what what's uh, what does it mean for a woman to be satisfied versus not satisfied? <clears throat> I think deep inside of every woman is a to be met. And it isn't just a physical meeting, but it's a combination of being met emotionally and fully, being fully met on a spiritual level, which is seen and revered as a very, very important part of the creative process. And that her Vagina, and in concert, we refer to it as a jail. This is a sacred space, and that it needs a kind of dark attention that allows it to come into its full blossoming, like a fruit or a ripe into part of her body that sometimes is just dormant and it's bleeding. And a vibrator doesn't fully awaken it. And a man who just wants to get in there and get it on and get it off is not able to really access the kind of intimate energy that a woman really feels. And I think men really desire this too, but they don't really know what they're looking for because it's not in their body by nature. Their body is hardwired to ejaculate quickly to get the job done. And a man's intention and direction is very focused. And so he left his own devices and his own natural instincts. Men oftentimes get off very quickly and they don't. Especially when men use um, porn, particularly digital porn, and they're watching these flicks where there's you know, very quick positions and a cum shot that's very, you know, Come and done, and then she just stops and be depleted. Now, I'm not saying that that's not uh, ever desired. Sometimes that's releasing is a great way to get a man to relax the stress of the day and get a visit night. But it's not always appreciated or desired for a woman. And so, if that's all a man wants when he wants to release, he should take care of himself and not expect his woman to always take care of him in that way. Or, 
you know, find a balance. So that sometimes you can have cookies, just come and done and go to sleep, have an orgasm every once in a while, and that's what the desire is. And then once in a while, have gourmet sex, where it can last all day long, and leave a person feeling tingly everywhere, and feel as though their body is being different than they can do. And that kind of an experience, I think, especially that Valentine's Day is coming up, and women have this yearning for that romance, that starts long before you reach the bedroom, that is kind of courting and um, love notes and presents, and you know, taking time to really prepare oneself to be in a state of being connected into the same other. We you know, have a simple day for that. So on that day or around this period of time, starting right now, <laughs> and right. throughout the whole month of February, I think it's really important to create some special time for a gourmet experience that nourishes every cell and every organ and every part of the body. Um, and, and we kind of tap it into that part of us that's beyond our mind-going system. And that, as I mentioned earlier, is an afterglow that enables us today or at least the month. I can still remember times when I've had those oh my God experiences, and they'll never lose me. They become deeply imprinted in my psyche in a way that I know from having those experiences that I am a magical being. And that it isn't just about sex, but it's about the body connecting with the heart and the soul. So for me, you know, true, rich, satisfying sexual experience is physical, emotional, and spiritual. Hence the title, coming together, body, mind, heart, and soul. And then there's a doubt. You know, sometimes you want to have something that's sort of in between, you can't spend all day, but you want to have at least an hour or two where you just focus on each other and give each other a nurturing, loving, healing, relaxing, rest-of-eating massage. And, you know, that's kind of like a really good home-cooked meal. Not necessarily a gourmet thing, but it's something like a satisfying, nutritional, healthy, revitalizing experience that can leave people feeling rich, satisfied, and satisfied. I strongly recommend people learn to give and receive deep, erotic, sensual massage. And learn how to give in a way that your heart can create that kind of an experience for your partner or even for yourself. So, you know, I know in the Valentine's season, some people are feeling like, well, I, I don't have a partner. How can I have an experience that creates sex if I'm just alone. And if they think that it's about the partner, they're either feeling lonely or dissatisfied or incapable of having a loving experience. And I think self-love and self-loving, self-pleasure is also a very useful and important thing not to be overlooked. And sometimes that's really an important way for a man and a woman to sort of pair themselves to come together with each other. When I started uh, studying in Tantra, we had this ritual called the Seven Nights of Tantra. And for seven days and nights, we spent a lot of time focusing on so many different ways to stimulate and awaken sensitivity and pleasure, release blocks and emotions, um, and any memories that we're stagnant in our bodies and our muscle memory in preparation for this great Nathuna uh, ritual night where we made love in the highest form. And in the classical tantra, this is called the Mysuna ritual. And the preparation for Mysuna can be several days, a week. Ideally, you build it up to um, a, a lunar event, like a full moon or you know, an eclipse or both, which we just had and we'll be having again. 
so that you're really in alignment with the universal and cosmic forces too. Because the more you bring in the energies around you, the more profound and powerful the experience can be. Exactly. So now let, let me get this straight. You earlier you said that a gourmet orgasm could uh, could start in the morning and in that in that night, but it can also start in the morning and in a month from now. Is that what I heard you say? <laughs> well, you know, I'm just saying that a sexual um, arousal or the things that build our desire for sex isn't just what we do in the bedroom. It might be days before you actually have a sexual date when you send each other texting, you know, sexy text messages, or you leave a, a love note in your partner's pocket so that when they go to work and they slip their hand in their pocket and they pull out this love note and they read it in the middle of a work day, it gives them that warm kind of tingle, like, ah, somebody really cares for me. I feel their love and it's with me right now. Even though you're in two separate rooms or two different parts of, you know, the city or maybe even two different parts of the world, especially when you're in two different parts of wherever, so that you can stay connected. Because it's the mind that connects us. You so, know, emotionally. And, no, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying that if you want to have a really great experience in bed, it starts long before we get in bed. Absolutely, starts, right. You know, days before where you start to build that desire and that yearning and that longing. I know for me, what I'm, um, one of my love languages is, is acts of service. So I know when a partner does something for me, like he does some electrical wiring because he knows how, and I don't know how, and then suddenly my room is lit up with some beautiful colored light. You know, that colored light gives me a turn on feeling. It makes me feel loved. It makes me feel desired. It makes me feel wanted in a way that just turns me on. And every time I put that light on, I feel this love. I feel the presence of this person who took the time out of his busy day or evening or whatnot to just make an expression of love to me. Some other people's love language is quality time together, taking a walk in nature or going to the beach together and just feeling, you know, the fresh air you know, caressing our skin and, um, you know, there's, there's other love languages of gifts, you know, giving a person a gift that says, I care about you, I thought about you when I picked out this necklace or this flower or this whatever. It doesn't have to be an elaborate gift. It's just the essence, you know, the gesture that creates that desire that sort of starts in the heart and then kind of tingles and trickles down into our genitals and creates a turned on feeling because our mind and our body are feeling love. And when you feel love in not just your genitals but in your heart and in your mind, then we create the element for having these multiple explosive, memorable orgasmic states. Got it, got it. So, you, know, you don't have to wait until Valentine's Day. You can start it several days ahead of time. And I was talking about lunar cycles, you know, certainly on the full moon, there's a much stronger energy. And in Tantra, we talk a lot about the power of uh, sexual magic. So that the power that creates life also has the ability to recreate and rejuvenate and magnetize and create that charisma that makes us magnetically attracting um, whatever it is we desire in life. And if you choose to do this practice of sexual magic, where while before, during, and after having a sexual encounter, you're focusing on something in addition to focusing on the pleasure, you're also focusing on something that you want to create with this pleasurable energy, rather than baby. You don't have to create a baby, but still the quality of energy has a creative potential that can create mm, a house. Um, I was listening to a story of one of my country teachers who had to move very soon and was putting out the energy to the exact kind of house they wanted, he and his wife. And 
when they made love, they visualized that house. In fact, they wrote down the qualities of the kind of house that they wanted and posted it right next to their bedside so that when they made love, they could direct the energy very easily toward that desire. And what happened was just walking down the street, they were able to find the first house that was right there in their neighborhood. And it was just like bumping into one of their neighbors and having a friendly conversation, which led to, long story short, then finding the perfect home that they are now moving into. So you can use... I know the same thing happened for me. Mm-hmm. You can utilize uh, orgasms to manifest things or whatever into your life. Is that correct? Is that what I hear you saying? Yeah, it's sometimes referred to as sex magic. It's using the energy of creativity, the energy that creates life and babies. And instead of making babies with that energy, it's still like a raw, pure, creative material that oftentimes gets kind of dispersed and dispensed with without much attention to it, purpose and its power. And so it doesn't have that creative magnetic energy. But just think of it this way. When a person is really aroused and turned on, their psyche is much more permeable. Their ego is sort of out of the way enough so that they can be very penetratable to um, creative ideas and input, um, sometimes it's very valuable to use that space to help a person break out of some long traumatic memories and experiences in their life. So it isn't just about creating or attracting things that you want, but it's also using that energy to kind of restructure the psyche of a person so that instead of sort of falling into these old patterns, which believe me, as a surrogate and practitioner of Tantra, I come across so many people who've had traumas in their life, and I was one of those people. And I know that a memory of trauma is kind of like deeply ingrained in ourselves. And when a positive, pleasurable experience occurs, sometimes it stirs that negative emotion or memory up. And in the process of stirring it up, it becomes like a vivid, right there in your face memory that if it isn't dealt with consciously, it can totally create an obstacle in the uh, avenue of of love and intimacy. So that one moment you're having a wonderful, loving experience, and the next moment a person is like off in another zone where they're having some flashbacks or memories or disassociation where they're not even present in their body anymore. And I know that experience so intimately and so painfully, and which is one of the reasons why I've become the kind of healer and coach that I am, because I know how difficult it is to be with a partner who's making love and giving themselves to me, and I'm just not feeling it. I'm feeling some memory or I'm feeling some kind of blank emotion where there's like a numbness rather than pleasure. And I remember being with a partner one time who was very conscious and very tantric, and I was, you know, noticing that he was doing a lot of beautiful things to my body, but I just wasn't feeling it. Because in my mind, there was a block between my physical experience and my um, emotional experience. And I, I finally said to him, I'm feeling so frustrated right now because I see that you're making love to me, but I don't feel it in my body. I'm feeling numb. Uh. And I just want to scream. I'm just so frustrated because I can't feel what you're doing. I just want to let it out of my system. Can I just let it out and scream? And he said, okay, but remember, we're in a hotel right now. <laughs> so put a pillow over your mouth. Because we don't want a security guard to come knocking on the door. So, of course, I, you know, I'm really, you know. So I did that. I put this pillow over my mouth and I just, ah, I let it out of my body. I let it out, let it out. And after a moment, I had this laugh. And memory was so minor, but at the same time, it had such an impact on me. And, you know, this is one of many examples. But in this flashback, I suddenly remembered not being uh, the most popular girl in school and having an attraction to a guy who I thought was really hot. And he gave me zero interest, like absolutely zero. (laughs) I felt invisible. I felt unlovable. I felt undesired. While I was thinking, that's my lover, this is what 
coming up for me. It's just, I am not lovable. I am not desirable. I am not able to be in this moment having a wonderful experience. And as soon as I let it out of my mind, you know, I just screamed it out, I just kind of remembered that whole scenario. And in that memory, it was like, it's just kind of like watching driftwood floating in the river. It just kind of went. And there it was, and I watched it. And didn't even have to say a word to him about it. That's the beauty of this. You don't really have to go back into those traumas or those memories. You just have to notice them and give love and attention to that experience. So my beloved said to me now, now that you've let it out of your system, breathe my love into the place where you felt that pain. And as soon as I did that, it was like everything shifted. I felt vulnerable. I felt soft. I felt willing. I felt lovable. I felt so tender. And suddenly I started feeling a lot of pleasure in a place where I was feeling numb before. So it's so amazing how the state of mind can so deeply influence how we feel in our body. And when our state of mind is separate from what's happening, we need some kind of practice or some way to release it. I teach people how to do a breath technique that a whole body orgasm breath technique. And it's um, kind of a way to stimulate orgasmic energy so that you can find those lost places. But sometimes you don't feel safe enough to say to a partner, I see that you're making love to me, but I just don't feel it. You know? So it's, it's safer and sometimes a lot easier to do an exercise like a, a stimulated orgasmic response technique that brings those things up in a safe environment where you can just let it rip and let it out and then on the other side feel so much more whole and, yeah. and alive. Got it, got it. So that's kind of taking, you know, that idea of such magic and, and turning it inward rather than just attracting something on the outside or you know, creating vitality and rejuvenation and health. It's learning to use orgasmic energy to clear out our psyche. Because every experience that we've had in our bodies leaves an imprint. And some of those imprints are positive and some of them aren't so positive. And when we have a negative imprint, a memory that leaves us feeling like it is for me, unlovable and undesirable and unattractive and just numb, we need to replace it, we need to address it and release it and let it go so that we can return to our innocence, go back to that original state where we, you know, the way that we were created before we had these glitches in our psyche that create the lock. I hear you, I hear you. Yeah? Yeah, you know, oh experience yeah. Being in a state like that or... Well, you know, first of all, you have to be conscious that you're even experiencing that. And a lot of women don't even, they don't even know that they're, they're experiencing that. And they just go, they, they, they let, let it go and they don't bother uh, uh, tuning in and, um, and, and, and just being conscious about any of that. They just go away. Yeah. They, they, they just go away. They don't know where they're going, but they just become kind of like, distracted, irritated, um, you know, like they just want to stop. Sometimes it shows up in all kinds of weird ways. Sometimes it'll feel like, I just want to stop, it hurts, or it doesn't feel good, or I just want to get out of bed and have something to eat, right? And, uh, you know, a lot of people overeat, try to overcompensate for that emptiness inside. Right. You know, and that's why I've taken on this role as a love coach, because I've been there, I've done a lot, a lot of work to clear out that psychic debris in my own being. And God, I can't tell you how much more orgasmic and turned on and happy I am than I've ever been. And how much sexier I feel than I did when I was in my 30s. And you know, I think, you know, 20s and 30s are just beginning to awaken ourselves, ourselves sexually, even if we haven't had traumas. And some of those traumas aren't even necessarily so huge or you know, what somebody from the outside would look upon as being a trauma. Exactly. Some of them are, okay? I mean, some women have been, you know, sexually or, you know, emotionally abused. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, women who have said yes because they felt forced into having sex when they really didn't want to 
when their body said no. So in a way, they were actually kind of betraying themselves. And then how can you possibly feel deep, deep sexual, emotional satisfaction, let alone spiritual, when there's a yes-no kind of conversation going on inside? It's, it's, it's not possible. Right. It leaves you feeling, you know, kind of dizzy and disconnected and not interested. And there's so many people who aren't interested in having sex. And they don't want to address those issues, so they just don't do it anymore. Exactly. Those are the ones who need the kind of services that I offer or that Tantra in the modern day, you know, really focuses on because it's so needed. You know, I, I, I get these, these sessions, these readings that I do, and so many times I run across women and, and you know, my husband, my boyfriend left me for a younger woman. Well, so what? Yeah. You know, you, you, these women can be just as attractive or more attractive than those other women, you know, if they apply themselves. And, and that's all that you have to do is apply themselves instead of just giving up and throwing in the towel. You know, you, you, us men, we, we fight for you women all the time. Well, why can't women fight for men all the, as well? Why, why, you know, why do they have to give up? It doesn't make any sense. Hmm. Yeah, I think that sometimes we think that sexy is uh, Com com physical attribute. Com competition or yeah, whatever. It, it doesn't have to be. And, 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 you know, and, you're, and you're right. If, if, if women just take time to really, really um, experience the flower within, within themselves, you know, all flowers are beautiful. We, you know that. We know that. So why do they have to be any different than any other flower? You know, or, or why can't they be just as beautiful as any other flower out there? I, I don't, you know, they, they can. They can, absolutely can. They can. Well, there's really no comparison. Every flower is unique and unto itself beautiful. Exactly. And, and really, many flowers turn into fruits, and then the fruits ripen and become sweet and juicy. And, you know, I think mature women are like wonderfully ripe, delicious fruits. Absolutely. I love I also, juicy, juicy fruit. Why not? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you were going to say? And many women haven't really allowed themselves to sexually mature. Only because, or largely because, they haven't really explored their own inner mysteries and sexual potential. Exactly. Um, especially if they're accustomed to using vibrators. And I work with a lot of women who are addicted to vibrators. Yeah. And when I say addicted, I mean they can't have an orgasm without it. <laughs> Right? Because they haven't learned how. And, you know, I do a yoni massage. I help women to awaken their yoni. And it's so precious to me. It's so beautiful. When I see a woman begin to feel her juiciness and, you know, inside of her yoni, it becomes fluffy and bright and juicy like that fruit we're talking about. And she discovers, and I have her feel inside herself. What does that feel like? What do you feel like inside? Isn't that a beautiful feeling? Now you know why men like to be there. <laughs> right. Sweet and fluffy and soft and yielding. But if a woman is only having clear orgasms where there's a lot of tension, then what happens a lot is that there's a kind of a contraction that happens with that tension, which causes a uh, kind of a decirculation of the blood flow. So that rather than being fluffy and soft and yielding in, inside, it becomes kind of tense and hardened and almost dry and uh, um, unpleasant. Exactly. It's really unpleasant. And, and so it's not very inviting for a man. I think it's really important for women to learn to massage and awaken themselves vaginally. Absolutely. And then to show their partner. And I just want to share one great story about that. Um, I was, at one time, I was being auditioned to um, be in one of Margot and I's videos. And Margot is, for those who don't know her, she's one of the pioneers of Tantra, a French woman who's been teaching Tantra for many, many years. And part of the audition was I had to actually pleasure myself in front of her and the camera. <laughs> don't make me, honestly. I mean, talk about anxiety. <laughs> And pressure. I was like, oh my God, I have to do this. Okay, well, I better get used to it because if I'm going to be in a video, you know, there's going to be lots of <laughs> Right? So so I did my best. I did my goddess best, of, you know, to try to bring about pleasure in my body. 
And afterwards, the only thing Margo said to me is, you try too hard. So I took that home and I thought, oh, I'm trying to right. Right. less efforting and relax more. That night I pleasured myself all by myself and I didn't try so hard. In fact, I did the opposite. I relaxed and then I told my body, because it was like this inner yearning to understand my the wisdom of my body. So I told my body, relax more, relax even more, relax even more. And each time I told myself to relax, I could feel myself softening inside as my fingers were touching myself. I could feel this kind of opening, this expansion. And something amazing happened that completely blew my mind. I started experiencing a quality of pleasure that I never felt before. And it was with less effort and less driving and no vibrator, just me touching myself in a loving and gentle way. And it blew my mind so much. And after that, I wanted to show my boyfriend what I had discovered about my life. <laughs> so I, I, yeah, really, I wanted, so I wanted just to watch, okay? Just watch, okay? <laughs> right? Right, right, exactly. So <laughs> I didn't want him to be too much of an interference, even though I knew he wanted to play with me. I said, I want you to watch, but I don't want you to touch me right now. I just want you to, like, enjoy witnessing me. And so I started pleasuring myself. And I had to sit on the floor, no lie. Like, okay, I'm going to be on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I know because I I've done that I've done that with other women as well because for the same yeah. reason. But go ahead. Right. So you know I've obviously and and to be honest, it was a turn on knowing that he was watching. <laughs> but it was also a turn on you know really because I, I guess there's a part of me that's a little like exhibition. Exhibition. Like, yeah. So much. You know I've been in a lot of videos and some of them I've done some pretty orgasmic things. Um, and, and while he was watching, I was feeling his attention on me, which made me want to just show him even more. <laughs> multiplied ten times when I experienced when I felt pleasure. <coughs> the amplification of what I was feeling with him watching was immense. It was just, it, you know, for people who haven't tried that, I would say, please, you know, give yourself and your partner the benefit of you know, demonstrating or you know, exploring. Just sharing, just sharing. I mean, that's that's a form of sharing. Mm -hmm. And and I I, I want to tell you this, Mare. In a very intimate way. Ma Mare, and also all you women out there. You know, you women, you you think you you feel, but you know, us men feel too. We absolutely do. And it's an aphrodisiac when when you women are enjoying yourself, like, and you're all juicy and all just yeah. just yummy. We are enjoying that yumminess and that juiciness just as much as you are. Seconds. Just because we feel you uh, as much as you feel us, I'm sure of it. So next time, you, you know, next time you, you you're, you're trying to please your your lover, please yourself. That's probably one of the best things you can do, and see what happens. Good advice, absolutely. So I just want to let people know how they can work with me. I know we're coming up to yep. the end of our time together. So um, I am available for private sessions. I have a website, Mari Simone. 60 seconds. MariSimone.com. Go ahead. Yeah, MariSimone.com. Or Tantra Heaven. That'll take you to my fan page on Facebook. And uh, starting at the end of this month and on a regular turning of points, uh, every few months I create a class called Mojo Mastery where I teach men how to become multi-orgasmic and how to turn their women on in the most extraordinary, mind-blowing way. Awesome. So awesome. I would love to have your people come and uh, join me in this course. It'll be an online course, so you can join me from anywhere in the world. Awesome. And it'll be a lot of fun and very enlightening. I want to thank all of you. I want to thank you, Mare, for sharing your expertise and your, mm -hmm. your yumminess and your juiciness with us. And um, I want to thank all of you Ten for stopping seconds. by. Have a God Goddess week, and and also have fun. On uh, I give all of you all permission to be yummy and have fun and and be juicy on Valentine's Day. Have a God Goddess week. Right. Either love it you are, always have been, and always will be. Aloha. <laughs> this session is no longer being recorded.